I think I'm doing it again. I'm really not good at this camera setup. We are now on day two, three, four of our quarantine. We're still alive. I have no bite marks, so I must be doing pretty well. The cabin fever is setting in a little bit, but social distancing is so much easier in these times because of access to all the entertainment that we have. What do I want to talk about today? We have two casualties in Iceland so far. One a tourist visiting Iceland and the other one was an Icelandic woman. This is a bit morbid but it's the reality of it and we're going to see more deaths. We don't need to panic and the last thing we need to do is start sharpening the pitchforks. What we need to do now is take responsibility for our actions, help others accept their responsibility and we don't do that by attacking them in the media. People making excuses for bad decisions is not good. They should own up to it. We will all make bad decisions at some point or another and we need to accept that and we need to accept that in others and we need to do the best out of what we have. We are supposed to be united against this. We are lucky here in Iceland that politicians haven't been really participating in the discussions with a few notable exceptions. We have a panel of specialists who are reporting every day to the nation and they keep getting asked the same questions over and over again. So I think we should just make a fact, frequently asked questions and then and, and send people to that. The biggest problem during this pandemic is not going to be the disease itself, but the contagious fear that comes with it. How it fits people up against one another when they should be uniting. We should be trying to treat people around us better, if anything. We should be helping them. We should be trying to make it so that they make it through because if they will, there's more chance of us making it through. Because if five people are trying to help one person, you're going to see a lot more chance of everyone making it through alive. And we have the recession coming up and that's increasing the fear factor. Already companies are closing down and, and, and it's affecting the morale of the people in a big way. I think that we need to start thinking about the positives we have. I was coming home from work the other day. I had just finished an 11 hour shift and I was feeling okay. I was thinking about work and then my mind went to this pandemic thing and all the things and, and the uncertainty in my future. I just settled. I just sat there in the car driving and it was just this certainty that came over me and it was just, I just can't the hell down. I have done everything. I'm doing everything I can and I thank you are too, most of you. Probably all of you are doing what you can and you have to learn to accept that that's all you can do. Knowing that, when you understand it, 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 it goes inside you, it's, it takes away the fear, it takes away the anxiety and the stress. Yeah, you're going to be stressed. There are things, things are going to be stressful for quite a long time. Probably the next couple of months are going to be extremely interesting. What it means is that when you grow older you can tell people I grew up in this and this is how bad it got and this is this is this is so you'll have the old people ready to go. You don't have a world war thankfully but you'll have a pandemic to talk about especially if you survive it. The people that are gonna be having the toughest time are kids and teenagers. The teenagers will feel the uncertainty and they might last out. So explaining to them and getting them on board is very important. I think schools here in Iceland are doing a good job, but the irregular schedule that they're holding now is not good for anyone, and so parents have to be very much aware of this. And kids might not understand this, so just enjoy the time you get with them. I woke up at six o'clock with me and went to bed way too late crawled into bed with her and asked her to lie down and sleep, which she of course did not. She's very bad at taking orders, just like her mom. I was just amazed by this little monster being up so early, jumping on me. I was trying to close my eyes and every time I closed them she would make a sound or something. I asked her to lie down, she would lie down, cuddle into me for about 15 seconds, then she would get up again and, and in the end I just woke up Sonia, you know, it's the best thing to do, you know. Moms, they're really good at this stuff. She is helping me a lot getting through this. Oh, Sonia asked me to be more concise because he's editing the videos. I'm gonna try to do that. The things you need to worry about are fear and anxiety and stress. Fear causes anxiety and stress. And you don't need to fear 
if you're doing things the proper way, right? No one knows what the proper way is, so all you can do is do your best. Try to listen to medical experts. Try to listen to the authorities. I said this before, I said this in the last video, so this is going to sound boring, but this is just so important that we unite behind them and go through with what they're proposing. If we're going to be rebel, re, rebel, rebelling and not doing things together, if we're not united in what we're doing, like the social distancing thing, then it's going to be really tough to get through this. So we're going to have people we can blame things on, and that's never good. Because we shouldn't be passing the blame either. We're just going to have to stick it out together, whether we like it or not. I'm going to mention social distancing as well. Social distancing is when we close off, we limit our interactions with other people. We do not go to the store unless it's absolutely necessary. If you're going to have to get food, get it delivered. Don't go into the places, both for your sakes and everybody else's. Stop meeting your friends directly. Start doing digital meetings digital everything we have this amazing technology with your calls don't meet up with your friends for a pint of beer yeah don't do alcohol on the stress it doesn't help you won't relieve your stress and it will probably affect your immune system in a negative way i can hear everyone going <gasps> i'm probably going to see a few thumbs down but so be it i have now almost a week off and i'm trying to take the time to do things i haven't been able to do for a few months Playing this game, I actually entered a fantasy league of uh, basketball, NBA. Such a good way of diving into something with others and not worrying about what's going on. We don't need to worry about it. We can only do our best and then it's done. You tend to stay at home. What happens is that the disease has a less chance of spreading. You don't go into public spaces unless it's absolutely necessary. You go do your shopping for the week. You go once a week. You don't go four times a week like you do today or I do today. And the model revolves around that if you have a limited number of contacts, then you have a limited number of possibilities of getting infected. If you're in contact with 50 people or if you're in contact with five people on a daily basis, which one, which group do you think is less likely to get you sick? Of course, the five if you limit contact and you keep your distance from people you can still be in contact write the mail no emails because they're electronic and you don't want to cough on the letter play games with your friends yeah and just chat with them on messenger or something stay in contact with people but not physical contact not for the next couple of months probably take care of yourself remember eat drink lots of water do your stretches, do as much exercise as you can. The weather outside today is really good, so go for a nice long walk or a run if you can. Stay safe.